I'm going to kind of go from small to large, and then with the second book, I'm going to go from large to small. It's all really well done. <laughs> um, okay, right, so basically, I mean, we're talking about, you know, packing your work, making it safe for, for shipping, you know, whether it's just sort of sending it through the post or whatever. Um, I mean, really, the, the, you know, the whole crux of a, of a workshop like this is that, the, you know, obviously, as an artist, um, you know, no matter, no matter how large or how small you work, generally speaking, especially with glass, you know, you, it's, a, it's a very expensive material to work in for a start, so even, on, even at a small sort of level. Um, you put a lot of hours into it, a lot of time into, into, into the work, and so, you know, you really want to protect it you know, from, from, from arriving at a gallery or an exhibition or, or even just storing it, you know, even just storing your work. Uh, <clears throat> it's important to have it well packed and, uh, uh, um, and, and, and also packed in a way that makes it, this is very important, to, is to make it very, very easy for the receiving gallery or whatever the, you know, the exhibition to be able to sort of unwrap it and then put it back in again after the exhibition. So, so they're not messing around with lots of bits of newspaper and, you know, kind of bits of foam and bits of, you know, whatever. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a nice kind of logical kind of thing. And, and, and you know, that's very important because um, if you don't pack something very well, then the gallery at the other end will equally not pack it very well. And so, in, in fact, that's when things usually get broken is, uh, is when the gallery sends it back to you and they've just literally said, well, that person's not that bothered. They, you know, so we'll just chuck it back in the box and send it back to them, you know. And generally speaking, you know, the, the gallery will not you know, will accept any responsibility. They only accept responsibility when the work's in the gallery you know sort of thing so so really it's, it is up to you to make sure that your work is protected going out and coming back in again um, so you know this is only a, like it's only a, 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 a fairly short workshop but I'm just going to go through a, 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 a sort of scenario of, of different of different sort of pieces and just show you uh, um, how how I prepare things and at the end of the workshop um, I've got a uh, a PowerPoint, which unfortunately would be nice to have it show up on a big screen, but apparently we can't get access to that. So th there is a, and this is actually making a, a, a crate. I mean, generally speaking, I'm, you know, my, my work is relatively large. I mean, I, you know, I do the odd small thing for very similar sort of exhibitions. A lot of you have taken part in, like the vessel show and the postcards and the celebrations, things like this, you know. And, um, you know, it's very noticeable because I've quite often helped Pam sort of unpack work for these exhibitions and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how, you know, badly fit some things are packed, how kind of very, very uh, uh, vulnerable they are. I mean, and it's always amazing that, that, that more things don't get broken. But, uh, but in a sense, you know, don't, the, the important thing really is, as I say, it's, it's re recognising the value of the work in terms of your hours and time you've spent and protecting that because just wrapping it up in a, in a piece of bubble wrap and slipping it into a, 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 a you know a, 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 what do you call it? a poly bag what do you call it um, you know is, is quite often not good enough it might you know it might might work so so you know a lot of this workshop would be a slightly about overkill really um, I'm starting I'm going to start well I'm going to start small and I'm going to be talking about also recycling um, as you can see these are all kind of just found boxes there's nothing here that is specifically made um, generally speaking I mean I, I try to recycle boxes rather than um, uh, I'll, you know I'll go I'll talk about supply you know places to get stuff from later on but, but basically I, I, I like to recycle boxes if I can rather than going buy new boxes as such you know or as the, the um, as the PowerPoint will show you you know I will actually build a, a crate from scratch using proper timber and all this sort of stuff you know um, so first of all this is a, I mean this has already been partly done this is my, my daughter Morag who also makes glass that sort of uh, created this 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 box um, and, and really what, what I'll be talking a lot about is, is literally cutting out, cutting out foam um, from, uh, again, this is foam just acquired from upholsterers. So it's just, just, it's just sort of old, um, old up, 
Hull Street cushions, and um, you know, you, 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 generally speaking, most reasonably large towns will probably have a, have a couple of upholsters in them, and it's making just making contact with them and saying to them, you know, any any kind of large kind of lumps of foam, any cushions that you get, you know, please save them for me, you know, and uh, if you've got the space to store them, great, you know, if not, you know, you could sort of like warn people a few weeks ahead, you know, you're going to do a lot of packing or something like that, and then just uh, just acquire a quantity of foam that you can sort of work with, and uh, generally speaking, because they're upholsterers. This is typically the sort of thickness of foam that you'll get, you know, and, uh, and it could be thicker. And quite occasionally you'll get brand new pieces of foam because, you know, they're obviously like any industry, they have offcuts, you know. And uh, so in a sense, it's quite nice when you get nice clean bits of foam, you know. I mean, you know, you, you often wonder what's happened to these cushions over the years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where they've been. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, I mean, you know, we've, we've just gone through, um, you know, the, the celebrations and we've had the postcard exhibition and a lot, a lot of, of people, a lot of people who members of CGS have made you know, little pieces like this. You know, and quite often they've they've just they've just they've just um, uh, you know slipped them into a sort of little bubble wrap bag and uh, and then sort of stuck them in the post. And, and it's like I say, it's amazing how how they do, you know they do survive. But I mean, it's just by sheer luck because you you don't know what's going to happen. You know, in a post office, and they do get chucked around. So even for a small object like this, you know, taking a box about this size and then kind of cutting out. A piece of foam and then kind of placing that in you know and and, and, and if it's if it's if it's um, a, you know if it's just glass um, the glass is you know fairly sort of looks after itself you know I mean if it's if it's if it's something you don't want to get sort of fingerprints on and all this sort of stuff uh, or it's, it's got other materials that, that with it like it's got sort of painted wood frame then you would you would want to sort of wrap it in a piece of tissue first of all so so really, you know, that, that will then protect, you know, re re protect the surface. And uh, again, you know, when I talk about the suppliers, you know, we'll talk about packaging firms that, 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 that sell all this sort of stuff. But, but always think about protecting the surface of the object, first of all. So, you know, obviously, kind of logically, just kind of wrap it in a sort of a, you know, a, a suitable sort of, just a simple, suitable thickness of, of, of tissue. And then just, just, you know, just, 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 I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, this is all, it's all obvious sort of stuff. Then just, a, just a quick sort of bit of, yeah, sorry, you're, you're spoiling your filming. And then just, you know, kind of very simple sort of bit of, bit of taping together. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the actual kind of object. Protect the surface is now sort of reasonably protected. And that, that then could either go straight in to, to in, into, into a foam piece like this, or you could you could even sort of just just to make it a little bit you know get just to to allow it you know because again when it comes out at the other end you know people will take it out of the box and then it might be sitting around for a while so it's quite good to sort of actually have um, um, a piece of bubble wrap around it. Um, I buy you know I'm, I'm I'm sort of you know into a sort of major packing and I mean it's. And shipping work is kind of one of the one of the biggest sort of expenses of my uh, production, if you like, you know. Um, um, and so, you know, I, I have, and I've got a reasonably good space. So I, I've got, you know, packing material. We've got big. So I buy this, um, and this is the best stuff to get. Is the small the small bubble bubble wrap. It's very flexible. You can wrap it reasonably tight around an object, and you can put layers on and build up a thickness. So don't. Don't tend to use that big bubble wrap because that's kind of very inflexible and uh, it doesn't it doesn't protect really as well. So so using using sort of um, this kind of bubble wrap, you know, you can you can then kind of get. I'll talk about I'll talk about tools in a minute, but. Um, I'm 
just starting from scratch. I mean, there's there's bits of bubble wrap there, but I'm just sort of starting from scratch in the sense that uh, you know, just so that really you're you're, you're just putting a, a, a small amount of bubble wrap around the piece just to sort of um, just to sort of protect it from from general handling. Okay. You don't really, you know, you know. You, again, you can sort of, you know, I won't go through the whole business, but again, you can put sort of, sort of tape around it, and then that, that will then go into the, to this box. And if, and, and you know, um, well, let me talk about basic tools as well while, while I'm doing this. So really, because what we're dealing with is we're dealing with bubble wrap, foam, and cardboard boxes, and with sort of taping things. So. In terms of the foam, what you need to buy or, or acquire is a bread knife, <laughs> a nice serrated bread knife. I mean, this one I've had for years, you know. I mean, it's a, you know, and um, and a cheap little sort of serrated sort of a fruit knife type thing, and and that will give you, um, and especially with a, with a reasonably long blade, that will give you sort of a lot of depth when you're cutting out the foam. So this this will will actually this will actually cut. I haven't got a huge amount of space here, but um, so this this at the moment just just fits in there. It's not this. It's really gone. I've got the thickness. So I just want to take a bit to allow for the thickness of the of the objects I'm packing. So just using the, the bread knife, it will cut it just like a piece of bread, really. So you can, you can then pick a, cut a section out. This will then fit in there, and, and then that will that will sort of go you know go in and go nice and flush, and then literally you you've got that piece, and it's you know I mean we could drop this now from a full building like that if you wanted to, but that's you know that's kind of really really sort of um, uh, 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 sort of a, you know sort of in a sense. It seems like overkill, you know. You know I mean, it's, it's a small object. I mean, you, you know, obviously, you could you could probably find a box that is just slightly smaller and all this sort of thing. But you really want to be sort of generous with the amount of foam around it, so that that will withstand a lot of hurling around and uh, and abuse in a post office. So you've got you've got your foam cutting tools, um, scissors, um, tape measure. Uh, a T square, and really that's that's as, as bad as, as much as you. And then then just for, you know kind of kind of um, uh, markers for, uh, for, for 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 sort of writing on boxes etc. Uh, 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 Stanley knife that, that 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 will come in when I'm talking about using the plywood. Um, the next the next stage that that one you know once once you put your, once you put your your fragile tape on there. That would be ready to go, you know, addressed or whatever has got to be be done to it. The next stage, and there's all your various tapes. Um, you know, when it when it comes to a sort of a, a slightly more, uh, this is just a little test piece, okay. Um, when it comes to a slightly more kind of complicated, sort of heavier object, then you increase the size of your box, you become a little bit more kind of this. Um, I'm going to cut out a piece, of, I'm going to cut a piece of foam um, to make a block that, that this will sit in, and then I'm going to wrap that box in bubble wrap so it becomes like a cocoon of foam and bubble wrap. And uh, immediately you've got, a, you've, got your, your, you've got something which A, you can store without putting it in a box, okay, because you've got the foam block, the piece is buried in it, it's got bubble wrap all wrapped around it, you've got the name of the piece written on it, you've got all that sort of information, and you can stick that on a shelf and that's, that is story. It doesn't really need to go in a box, you know. But when you're ready to then ship it out, you would then either find a, a box, we'll talk about that, which is, uh, which will take the, you know, the actual exact size of the piece of foam, or, I'll do a lot of foam cutting, cutting in this kind of workshop. Um, or you cut something which is going to be um, uh, to, 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 to the to the uh, the size of you know the size of the piece. Now, before you do that, what I'm going to do now is just just is just mark quickly around here. This is where the the felt tips come in handy. Literally, 
just the outline, very, very crude outline of the piece. then literally cut, cut out that shape. I mean, obviously being aware of the thickness of the, um, of the foam, you're gonna cut down into the foam. Don't go, obviously don't go right through. And this is where the little, the little um, serrated knife comes in. I won't bother about that a little bit there. Just go around the top of the head bits. You've cut, you've, cut, you've cut a certain depth, okay? And then, you know, remembering that you're not gonna go right through here. You just grab hold of the foam and go to the sort of, use your fingers to go to the sort of depth that you want the, um, the piece to get to. And using the same knife, just cut across the foam, being careful you don't chop your fingers off at the same time. So it's, uh, but you'll you'll, uh, you'll get used to it after a couple of fingers have gone. <laughs> This is very. This is all very satisfying stuff, incidentally. You know, when you're, uh, and it does kind of. It does. It's a bit like making moulds. You have these lovely, kind of, uh, you know, kind of images. You know, that sort of get sort of built up. You know, um, generally speaking, I usually then give that a bit of a knock just to get rid of the any kind of bits of foam that's sort of in there, so they're not all floating around. And then that can then fit in there. Okay. And then. You can then make a lid. I, mean, I, won't, I won't spend too much time on these because obviously we've only got a, a, sort of, a relatively short amount of time. But um, um, basically, I'm, I'm going to make a sort of a lid. So it's sort of just roughly this bit is, is prominent, okay? So I'm just going to cut out that piece. worry about the flexibility of the foam because it comes in different grades, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's the, 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 the stuff I don't like using is you get you get you get foam that is almost like like rubber. It's like a sort of a, a very rubbery sort of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, the the, the firmer the firmer. The, I mean, that 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 foam that I've just you know cut out of that. But that was that's quite a rigid foam. This is a slightly softer foam. But as long as there's a little bit of if if it's too um, if it's too flexible and you're doing a big object, um, then you know, you, 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 and, and, and unless it's very, it's, it's a good because you know you, you do get you do get foam that is almost twice as thick as that. So again, you're, you're sort of thinking in terms of um, of, uh, of weight and size and the thickness of the foam. So just you know, just like common sense, like in a sense, kind of not using something that's too thin too soft so that the, the piece you know because there's obviously a fair bit even in that there's a fair bit of waste but that you know that's not going to kind of knock against anything so basically I'm just I'm just producing a producing a lid that's going to go on there um, let me just take that out again And then what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm, I mean, this is, I mean, this, this is all sort of just sort of um, kind of just giving you a feeling for working with the foam, really. So you, can, you know, you can drag the. You don't necessarily need a, um, a straight edge, but on, a, on bigger pieces, it's kind of quite useful. And obviously, you know, if if you, if you find you've got foam that is too too thick. Then you can you can actually sort of uh, you know you can cut it down that way if you just want for example if you want if you if you're then trying to fit the foam into a particular size box or whatever or or you you, you want a, a certain thickness that you haven't got then obviously you can cut it you know sideways on.
this is all this is all fairly basic stuff. We'll get we'll get slightly we'll get more to, as we go along. As we go along the table, it's going to get more and more complicated. How how thin would the thickness on the sides of the box? What the actual foam? The foam on the sides after. Yeah, well, 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 well. Ideally, what you what you what you want if you're if you're shipping something. Um, of a reasonable size, you want a, you want a, a, around about four inches of foam right. around the whole object, sort of yeah. thing. So, so I mean, and obviously the smaller you go, that kind of reduces. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm I'm sort of I'm kind of using a com combination of um, the reason why why the you know I'm, I'm not making the foam as thick. Um, I mean, obviously this well this one this this particular piece. Um, is, is assuming that you've only got sort of a fairly small, you know, you've got um, fairly small pieces of foam and, you know, you're kind of um, trying to sort of make as much as you can with the, with the you know, the piece you've got. So you've got, you've got it now in a, in a block, all right? You can be careful of that and we're going to knock that on the floor. Yeah. Would you use this particular packing technique to ship internationally as well? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the, the um, this is this is what the um, basically the, the the PowerPoint would be more about is for shipping large pieces sort of internationally. So you know, I mean, again, it depends. Um, you know, when it comes to sort of uh, boxes and things like this. Um, the, you know that when you're when you're sort of if you're sending it kind of uh, if you're sending a small piece within this country and it's going with the post office then you know um, in a way it's still gonna it's still gonna be you know kind of probably thrown around a bit so you you know you want to sort of protect it to a certain extent although saying that I mean the post office I think is they're fairly careful with things that you know that are marked fragile you know so they they, they do they do take they do take care of things but. Um, if, if it's if it's going international, then what I, internationally, the what I tend to do is, is then sort of find, uh, um, you know, find a, 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 a pretty sort of sort of heavy duty kind of a of a of a, of a box. I'm probably not to cut this big enough, doesn't it? I'll just I'll just use this, I'll just use the single uh, thing just for the demonstration. But normally, what what I'd do is I'd cut a, I'd cut a piece of bubble wrap. Double it so that it's got it's got a, a, bit, a bit, bit of sort of thickness to it, and then and then literally you sort of strap that around the piece, okay? And the tighter you pull the, 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 the bubble wrap, the more sort of firm the piece the piece is held in that in that sort of in that kind of bubble, in that block block rather. <coughs> So to, you know, tend, you know, you tend to tend to stretch things, and then and then you know, so say when you're when you're you're, you're folding in, make a, make a nice little sort of tight little parcel of the whole thing. Always always pulling it pulling it in towards yourself, so that so it's you know it's kind of it's tight, and the bubble wrap is stretched, and the, and the foam is squashed, you know, around the object. So immediately you've got you've got something you know which you know, that piece is pretty well. Sort of protected, and then that can go into a into a you know a slightly bigger box. This is again, this is you know so so. I mean that that object now. Um, once once you once you put a bit of you know you can then take some of your scraps of foam, put a bit of a put a bit of a sort of a layer in the bottom. Put that in. Or you could surround that with uh, peanuts, you know, for example, you know, but if that, but I mean, I, I, I you know, I tend not to use, I, I don't like using things like peanuts because they, they, they do, they do, especially, never, never use stuff like that, uh, you know, so for example, you know, you might just kind of put, put a bit of bubble wrap around a, uh, a piece of glass and then, uh, you know, put it into a box, shove a few peanuts around it and then stick it in the post, you know. I mean, the thing's going to move around in the peanuts, you know. So I, I don't like using them, but but certainly if 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 the piece of work is is sort of buried in a you know in a in a sort of a, a, a nice foam block block like that, and then then you know the sort of bits of foam are put around it and built up, so you end up with a 
a box full of foam bits, then you've got then you've got a nice sort of secure sort of you know kind of box with you know where it's it's kind of really really going to be kind of firm, you know. So I won't I won't I won't fill fill that up. And then really you know obviously just it's just a matter of then um, strapping sort of tape around it. <laughs> something something slightly stronger that there, 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 there is going to be kind of used for sort of sort of international uh, shipping. And what we've got here is a kindly donated, I'll just, I'll just deconstruct this box. Okay, so what we've got here is a wooden box that's lined with um, four millimeter ply. Okay, and I'll be talking a lot about four millimeter ply in a minute, okay, because we're gonna, we'll be going through that. So I've cut, um, find yourself a reasonably strong, I mean, you know, as I say, these, most of these boxes have been used uh, two or three times, so, but find yourself a, a reasonably strong box, you know, um, you know, if you can get, usually if it's, because if you look at these cardboard boxes, they're usually in, in, like, this is two, if you like, sort of two, two, two layers of corrugation. Ideally, what you want is like about three layers or on big boxes you want about four layers nice nice rigid <laughs> you've got a fairly rigid box but but even with a box like this you can make it rigid by then putting in ply okay so first the first thing is to make sure that the you know the base is you know well sealed okay and i tend to i'll talk about this on that one there but i tend to use um uh, from from the packaging company I, I go to, I, I buy sort of boxes of this. Um, it's a very very sort of cheap um, duct tape, really sort of thing. Uh, so it's a fabric fabric tape, which is you know just just nice and strong, and you can you can sort of you know kind of strengthen up sort of uh, um, um, seams and things on, on boxes. So uh, you know using using your tape. The see the other important tool we got here is just measure the inter inter interior diameters. Okay, make a note of those, cut your piece of, of plywood out, okay, and working with ply, while we're onto this, so this is where, you, where the old Stanley knife comes in handy. And you'll be seeing on, on, on the, because um, that's, a, uh, it's, it's quite a lengthy sort of, well, sort of, you know, relatively lengthy uh, uh, PowerPoint. So you know, I want to get to that before we, we have to finish. But 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 generally speaking, you can cut four millimeter fly ply with a with a Stanley knife. Okay, and and the way you do that is not by trying to cut through in one go. You do it very gradually. So so literally scoring scoring the surface with a straight line. You've measured you know you've measured what you want all this sort of thing. You cut a cut a line into the into the ply. And then using that kind of then just kind of several cuts, a little bit of pressure each time until you get to a point where you could literally like snap it. So it's fairly easy stuff to, to work with, you know. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously I've, I'm I'm fairly well built, so I can sort of cut through this stuff, you know. I mean, I've been doing it for years, but 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 basically, rather than try, you know, really killing yourself, just go through gradually, cut, you know, maybe half a dozen times, and then you'll get to a point where either you'll cut right through, or you'll get, you get to a point where you just, just bend it, and it'll just kind of snap apart. So you, you know, then you can cut your, you can cut your pieces of ply uh, to size. And so what I've got, I've got the base piece in there. I'll then cut two ends. sides so I've got I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, an, inter, an internal box all right there I've also I've also got a lid which is under here yeah um, and then I'll just put it on the floor for a second and then what I've, I've already I've already done is I've, I've cut a piece of foam to size here we've got a, a, a plate by um, Max Jackard, who's uh, it, it's going to go into a, a CGS auction sometime in the near future. It's quite a nice piece of glass, so just to give you, so it's a thick, fairly heavy, thick cast piece. 
and uh, you know I've got this really because it's very similar you know you know I, I know a lot of CGS members make slump bowls fused together you know there's a sort of little bit of weight to them and and, and, and you know so this can either you can I mean you can either wrap, wrap it in bubble wrap as it was there or you can literally just kind of take the bowl, take the bowl <coughs> and um, just cut out a Tell you what, I'm going to melt before long. <laughs> and then, really, what you what you've got to just do is just recognise the shape, cut cut to a shallow a shallow depth. Just get your edge. So you can either do this, as I say, with the bubble wrapped, wrapped around it, but I'm doing this with the, 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 the piece of glass just as the, just, just exposed to the, to the actual foam. And the same again, just kind of, you know, kind of start, starting with a shallow cut, just work, work your way towards the middle. Kind of, you know, kind of almost like visual, visualizing the shape as you go, sort of thing. You know, taking it, taking it down towards the center. So you're you're cutting in a you're cutting in a bit of a bit of a well. Always remembering where your fingers are. So what I've got is I've, I've cut an edge which is kind of like the, the kind of depth of the edge and then just cutting really down a, a sort of a bit of a well to drop the, um, drop the bowl into. You never know, cutting cutting foam could be uh, so exciting. <laughs> there we go. So that that will now then drop into there, sort of quite comfortably. It's, it's sort of you know, I mean, again, either wrapped in bubble wrap. Quite often, you know, I'll, I'll just put the, the piece of glass in, you know, by itself. Um, with this, you, 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 you know, literally, you're just going to put a, this because this has all been cut to size already. That piece of foam will just slot into here. You then got your your big foam lid. When you put that yellow bit on top, of which the yeah, the bit that you just cut out into the bowl. Um, well, you, well, you could do, but I mean, this is this is this is doing the you know this is doing the, the business. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you could you could cut a bit a bit more off of that, but but um, yeah, I mean, obviously the oh, that will in fact because it is quite a thin bowl, good idea, but uh, <laughs> not, it's not totally necessary. And then and then 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 the important thing when you're doing this is you know like I was trying to show you with that box. Build them, then build the box up with with, with more foam. So the, you end up with with it being sort of slightly above the surface of the box. So when you put the lid on, okay. So then you've got the, you've got a complete internal four millimeter ply box. Take the corners off of the, the the base bit and the top because they, they'll be sharp and they'll push their way through the box. But also it makes it easier for the the, the piece of ply to sort of um, you know to go into the box. Uh, please, when you when you get to that stage, never ever 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 oh. send a bit of work without a delivery note. In oh right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's got to, Yeah, I've got to come to that. But um, that's, that's the last box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, obviously, I mean, we I could go into all the kind of uh, documentation, 
Um, I've just I've just sent work to America and um, by FedEx. Uh, FedEx they won't insure the work. Just while just while I'm doing this, they won't insure the work. Um, so what you have to do is you have to get your own insurance out. And I've got um, I've got artists um, artists. Uh, Network newsletter. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've AN. got AN insurance, artist new newsletter insurance, which covers me for I can't remember so, so many thousand pound a year. So um, it will. Uh, so that's like a, so it's my own separate insurance. So if anything does get broken, I can claim on that insurance. You know, I don't know. Obviously, I can't claim off a of FedEx. I used to ship with a company based in Great Yarmouth, and they um, call, uh, called Panoplina and. Uh, they insured the work and everything, but 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 for, for, for all kinds of reasons, a lot of these shipping companies are just not, you know, they're not insuring work anymore, and um, um, and so you know, like in a sense that you know, I, I don't know, I, I you know, I don't know whether you can find any shipper that will actually insure um, certainly glass, um, and it's possibly not even art, except for for very expensive. Uh, art shippers that they will insist on packing the work themselves so they'll charge you a fortune for doing that and then you know obviously they know it's well packed you know, you know obviously they, then they'll insure it sort of thing. but from this sort of point of view you're um, so you can see what I'm doing here I'm just sort of tacking the uh, the top down um, with FedEx you will get uh, you do you do a, obviously you do a delivery note which kind of tells the gallery exactly what's in the box the wholesale price, everything that they have asked you to to tell them, um, uh, that will also use, be used as an invoice for, for customs. But 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 um, there is obviously uh, there are obviously new regulations that have come out for, for, for work going to the states where you have to fill in a separate uh, customs form which FedEx gives you, and uh, you know I'm presuming it, and all the other kind of shipping companies do as well. Um, which is done in duplicate and uh, it's just a, again a customs sort of uh, declaration about the value um, and then also on top of that you get a, 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 a sort of a little typed out sheet which is uh, is, is uh, declaring the, the work as art <coughs> and uh, so it's basically this work is made by me David Reekey is an original work of art and da, 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 it's you know all, all that sort of stuff which just is just telling them that, that it is just a, a, it's a you know, it's an, an individual. It's an individual work. It's not something that's been mass produced. It's not, you know, and uh, and then because there are tariffs um, with the states, they have uh, tariffs. So there is an there's an art art glass. Um, uh, 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 I won't, I won't. But basically, I've got, you know, there's a there's a, actually a number, an art glass tariff, which um, you know will be kind of applied to um, to glass art going to the states. Europe, of course, you don't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff yeah. at the moment. Yeah. At the yeah. moment, <laughs> but if we do go back to the old system, it'll be a nightmare because you'll be going down to Dover. You'll be having to take paperwork with you. Everything will be inspected. You'll then be charged export duty based on the the, the um, value of the goods, and, uh, and then obviously the same coming back in. You know, it'll be a hassle getting the work back from the Europe as well, whereas at the moment I can just shove this box in the back of my car, go over to Holland, France, wherever where I'm going, go to the gallery, drop it off and you know, I've, you know, I mean, even, even when it comes down, I mean, I mean obviously they're not interested, I mean all they're interested in is arms and drugs and things like that, so you know, the likelihood of getting stopped or, or, or questioned about the work is only purely because they, they might want to see what's in the box, you know, and nothing, nothing else, so. So you're running out of time. Oh, right, 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 okay. Oh, really? <laughs> Just a question. All yeah. the things you're packing are intrinsically fairly structural. Yeah. What happens? If you're something something really, really fragile. So if you do that too, it will just crush. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, again, you know, um, this the, 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 with that sort of work, it's probably usually the best 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 thing is to have um, uh, two in, uh, 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 an internal box. Right. So so really, well, again, what you what you want is, I mean, if it's if it's if it's if it's very vulnerable, then you're going to be making a small. Ideally, a small wooden box. You don't want something that's able to crush. I mean, that 
I mean, that as it is now, I mean, it's, it's, it's fairly, you know, you can't really, you can't really get to the, the work, you know. Um, you know, kind of that, that, the, the, the um, uh, sort of using foam with um, with a, a fragile, you know, because again, I mean, this is something I, I don't, I, I haven't experienced, you know, but, but um, obviously you just got to be very careful the way you kind of pack that, but make sure it goes into a rigid box and ideally a double box so that the, the um, I'm just going to quickly, while I'm talking, I'm just going to deconstruct this box just to give you some idea. This is, this is just a box that's kind of been, you know, abroad and things. But yeah, and then, and then sort of, uh, so a rigid box in tight, in, in, inside another box, and then, you know, foam carefully put around it, bottom, down the sides and top, and then, you know, kind of, again, you know, kind of just more or less what, what we've gone through there. And, and so like in a sense, the, 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 the inner box is protecting the piece from being crushed you know, if, if any real force is put on that, but if, as long as this box is fairly rigid, then um, you know it should be be safe. So, that, so with something with a really fragile thing, would that have two sets of four millimeter? So that both boxes would have. Well, yeah. Well, ideally, the first the first first box would probably want to be a, like a, a, a neatly made little wooden box, you know, to contain that kind of you know that very fragile. So, so that, you know, so it's literally kind of inside and then. You know, even using things like um, uh, 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 K-pop, you know, the sort of yeah. you know soft, fluffy material that you can carefully put round it, and the, so you, you you bury that within this kind of this hard wooden box. Then that goes in, you know, layer of foam. That box goes in more foam around that. So you, you know that that's then sort of uh, protected from, from violence. You know, out, you know, really. But using K-pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something like that. Some sort of you know soft sort of material that suits the kind of work. You know, yeah. and obviously you know. Um, so basically, this is this is just a large piece of work. So I'll just de quickly deconstruct it. So what I've got there is this is this is a base. Rewrap this with the other group. So we've got, I'll just go in reverse as it were. So this is a, a, a wood, painted wood base with, with, with lead on it. Okay, I'll just put this on the floor for a second. So that was cut out to take the base. This is, as I've been showing you, uh, um, half an hour goes quickly when you're enjoying this. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but it does like packing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look good. Well, it actually, it's, 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 it can be very kind of, uh, is it cathartic? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so so in here is a you know I mean this is this I mean this is you know kind of packed so it can be it can be sent it can be stored whatever you know um, if it was going to America this this box was was was, was, was created just to be shipped around this part of the world I'll get this out so you can. Every every part. Why well, well, I've got this is really just to, it's just showing you how you keep. If you've got sort of a multi-part thing, you've got everything sort of within the box. You know, the little little recess for the club. You know, the, the, the figure is cut out, and uh, you know, you've got extra bits of foam to go around it. So we've we got time for quick to go through the uh, what? the. Uh, well, we can put, we can have that run in afterwards. And okay, well, well, maybe, yeah, maybe we because during I'll, the evening. We, we, so yeah. we've got, we got to put. But is this the end of the? the yeah, this, yeah. All right, okay. Well, I, well, I hope it's useful. I'm going to say it's all very basic.